Coach, you talked about overachieving in the passing game, and a big part of that has been big play Gary. Gary Barnage having a career year already. I mean, not even close to a career year. He's blown his numbers away so much. What has he meant to this team and this offense? Yeah, he's been tremendous. I, I don't think it comes as a huge surprise to the guys that know him and just see how, how hard he works. That, that, that just doesn't happen uh, by chance what he's been able to do. That comes from hours and hours of, of preparation, taking coaching, understanding what we do concept-wise you know, on the jugs machine, working on routes after practice. You know, he was one of those guys during training camp, stayed out extra a lot. And you know, for an older guy, a lot of times you don't see that, that they don't want to take those you know, that, that, that added burden on the body. Uh, but, but he's a guy that's, that, that's really worked his way uh, to this point, and, and he's a good example. Sometimes guys get typecast as, hey, he's a career backup or a journeyman or he's, a, he's the third or he's a, whatever it is. And when he's given the opportunity uh, for whatever reason, whether it's by injury or guys leaving and, and not necessarily filling that spot, that he's been able to step up and perform at a high level. Big play gear. How about that? All right, it's time now for a little hashtag ask pet. And Coach, we're going to go with here's number one. What is the biggest thing you would like to get accomplished during the bye week? Well, I, I challenge all of our guys to be a very, very introspective, you know, self-evaluate where are they, myself included, you know, coaches, players. Uh, and I think the, the biggest thing coming out of it is, is to uh, – to have a plan for, for us to get better. All right, our second question is, is it true that you often slept in a closet in your office as a defensive coordinator of the New York Jets? That's technically uh, not true, but there is some truth to it. I slept in a closet behind Rex Ryan's office when I was a coordinator at the Jets. There was no closet in my office. <laughs> okay. So just, just so to you clarify. Were in a closet, though. And it wasn't, when you say closet, you think of, you know, a closet. You open it up and it's small and there's a you know, bowling ball falling off the, the, the top shelf. No, it, it was a storage room that had a, uh, it, was, it was big, big enough for, for a queen size inflatable mattress uh, that was actually very, very comfortable. So there were times where I felt like this bed's just as comfortable as my bed at home. Why should I go ahead and drive? So uh, it was a lot of late nights and uh, sometimes you get to that point where you just don't feel like wasting that time driving home and driving back. So you, you bunker in and fall asleep. All right, and finally, besides Rex Ryan, what other current NFL ho head coach would you most like to have a beer with? Uh, that's a good question. There, there's a good number that I already have crossed that off the list. So okay. um, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to say John Fox. Really? Yeah, I, I've, I've, uh, he and I spent uh, some time together in Indy uh, at the famous Steak and Shake by the, at the Combine late night. Uh, we didn't drink beer together. We had been separate and somehow ended up in the, with our, we had mutual friends that were there and he and I had a, from what I can recall, had a, had a pretty fun conversation. So I, I'd love to be able to go out and, and, uh, and spend some time with Foxy. He's, uh, he's quite a character. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Enjoy a little bit of R&R &R during the bye week and certainly getting back to work, getting ready for the Baltimore Ravens next Monday night. Great. Thank you. All right. When we come back, Alex Mack will join us for our player interview when we return on the Mike Pettin Coaches Show, driven by Liberty Ford.